Hi guys! Today I thought I would talk to you about how I knew I was pregnant with twins before my first ultrasound. So uh, before I start that, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who reached out um, after I posted the video that I was in a car accident. I feel much better, unfortunately, since then I have been having chronic headaches. So I've been seeing a chiropractor, um, my doctor um, pretty much was like, yep, your headaches shouldn't be chronic, so he gave me some medication that I can take sparingly if I need to. Uh, yesterday was pretty bad, so I've been using ice packs, peppermint oil, everything I can to help these headaches go down, and it just nothing helps. I drink like a gallon of water a day. Um, I am in Florida, so it is hot. Um, so I'm just trying to get rid of those headaches. Um, but other than that, I've been feeling very good and just wanted to say thank you so much. How I knew I was pregnant with twins um, before my first ultrasound. So honestly, they tell you that there's no way that you can actually um, know that you're pregnant with twins before the first ultrasound. The first ultrasound is the thing that's going to confirm that you are having twins. Um, I, however, knew. Uh, and if you watch my video of um, from my transfer leading up to my ultrasound, I think I even, I say it in there, I said, I think I'm having twins. So my first inkling that I thought I was having twins, this was even before I got my beta, was that I want to say five or six days after my transfer, I got a very bad bout of, uh, I don't want to say morning sickness, um, but something smelled really bad. I was on an airplane, I was flying back from Atlanta to Orlando, and I sat next to a guy who just had this very pungent aroma, and this has never happened to me before. And before the plane even took off, I got up, and I was like, I'm gonna vomit, I'm gonna vomit everywhere. Stop it, Finley. And, and um, come here. And so I said, I'm gonna vomit everywhere. I need to go to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom and I throw up and I come out and I tell the flight attendant and I said, I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. Um, and I need to change my seat. <laughs> and she, there was a seat open next to the bathroom and she put me in it, thankfully. And then she came back and she was like, I wouldn't have been able to sit next to him either. <laughs> so um, because that was only six days after transfer and it was such a very strong nausea, I, I was like, well, first I'm pregnant. I knew I was pregnant. So I got home that evening and I took a test. And this is six days after transfer. Um, so my beta wasn't until 10 days after transfer, 10 or 11 days after transfer. So I took the test and it was not only positive, but a very strong pink line. And the, the reason I, I even texted my friend and I said, I'm pregnant, look at the line, twins, question mark, <laughs> because it was so pink. Now, again, that doesn't mean anything. It could have just been a very high HCG. Um, the reason why I was like, oh, it might be twins when I took my pregnancy test was because when I was pregnant my first time, I had originally gotten a negative when I took it, I think I took it like two days before my missed period, and I gotten a negative. And then we went to Atlanta to visit my family, and then I missed my period, it didn't come. So I took it two days after my missed period and it was a very faint pink line. So even though I had missed my period and my very first symptom, which was my um, breast tenderness, was happening, and I was pretty sure I was pregnant, the, the line was very faint. So now we're talking about, this is six days after transfer, um, and it's supposed to be a two week wait, so 10 to 11 days when you're doing IVF. And it was, it was very dark. So I was like, um, I know I 
every pregnancy is different, but this is a really dark line for me. Wow. So my husband was like, I see that it's a dark line, I see that you're pregnant, but I'm not going to actually believe it until we get the results back from um, the clinic with your beta. Because he was just very worried that it might be a false positive, even though we didn't do a trigger shot. And I tried to explain that to him, but he didn't understand. So he's like, no, I'm not saying we're pregnant until we get the beta. So I was like, all right. So we waited a couple more days. So I think that was on like a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night. Yes. Yeah, so then my beta was on Monday morning and I get the call and they're like, congratulations, you're pregnant. And I was like, oh, I kind of already knew, thanks. And she's like, your beta is 863. And I was like, are, are you kidding me? That's really high, isn't it? And she's like, no, no. And I had done some research that any IVF patient will do. Um, and so I Googled like, you know, normal betas. And it says your normal beta needs to be in between 40 and 200 to be pregnant. And then it needs to double two days later. So in between 40 and 200 is good. And then doubling two days later means that it's, um, it's good. It took, and then they'll, they'll bring you in for more testing on your seven week ultrasound. So my very first beta was 863. And I called my husband and I said, babe, my beta is 863. And he's like, Oh my God, we're having twins. And he's so excited because he, he wanted twins. He's like, oh my God, we're having twins, we're having twins. And I was like, don't be alarmed. My other friend, her beta was in the 700s and she has a single baby. So I was like, it might not be twins, but he, he was like, it's twins. So then my second beta was, I think 1900, around 2000, um, which it doubled, which is great. But still, I'm like, wow, this is really high. Um, and I just had that feeling that I was, I really think that this is twins. I think the embryo split, because we, we only transferred one embryo. So the very next day, so I remember I had my beta on a Wednesday. On Thursday, we fly out to Colorado. So I am very newly pregnant four or five weeks pregnant, I think is what they would say. And with my first pregnancy, I didn't start feeling the nausea symptoms until about seven, eight weeks. We get to Colorado and I am tired right off the bat, super tired. And then I can't eat anything. Um, I can't make a video. I even just took them on like a two mile walk. Can't make a video without them barking. Come here. All right. So, um, we get to Colorado on vacation. I decided I didn't want to, I didn't want to ski because I didn't want to risk anything. So I'm just chilling out, but I'm exhausted. I'm, uh, tired, sleeping a lot. Um, can't eat anything. Everything smells bad to me. Everything tastes bad to me. Um, Literally, I was, I was really just eating fruit. Um, and, you know, my dad was just kind of like, oh, you know, toughen up. And I was like, no, dad, this is, <laughs> this is different. And I was like, this is, this feels different. And when I was in Colorado, I texted my husband. My husband couldn't come because he had army business. We'd already had a girl name picked out for the embryo. And I was like, if it's twins, what do you think of this second name for the second baby? And he was like, oh my gosh, I love it. So we had our baby names before we even went into the ultrasound to see if it was twins. We already knew what we were naming them. Um, so those are kind of the biggest reasons that I thought that we were having twins. The, the very dark line of pregnancy, the high betas, and the feeling the nausea, the, the sensitive to smells right off the bat. And I'm talking about six days after transfer, which I didn't feel until seven weeks when I was pregnant with my first. Now, everybody is different. Some people get pregnant with twins and their betas are in the 200s. 
Um, one of my friends is currently pregnant with twins and her beta was in the 200s, I think. Um, so I know that this doesn't always mean that a high beta doesn't always mean you're going to be pregnant with twins and feeling sick early on doesn't always mean you're going to be pregnant with twins, but it's that gut feeling that you have that you're going to be pregnant with twins. And so funny because after my beta, my husband just said, kept saying plural. He's like, Oh, how are they feeling? How are, you know, are you're feeding them today? Or like, what are, what are my babies eating? And he kept saying babies and there and they, and, um, and he, he kind of knew. So when we went to the doctor and I explained this in my last video, uh, that my doctor was very set on like just the one baby for the first, you know, couple of minutes of our ultrasound. And then he stopped filming and then she showed us the second one. He was just like, yeah, I knew it. Like he was like, yeah, I was actually waiting for the second one. Like he was very like, yeah, there, there was going to be no other way that it, it couldn't have been twins. Um, so we both kind of had that feeling that it's going to be twins. Like we know that there's, that it's split. There's two in there, but he was so adamant about it. And he has been wanting twins. He has been saying he's wanted twins for years. So the fact that we are now having twins <laughs> kind of blows my mind. Like those are my, how I knew I was having twins before my first ultrasound symptoms. Um, I would love to hear if you are having twins, what your first symptoms were, because I know that again, everybody's different. Everybody goes through the first trimester differently. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my video. Please press the like button if you like this video and subscribe. I'm going to be trying my hardest to get all these videos out, um, weekly to, uh, see my pregnancy update. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram because I update on Instagram way more than I do on YouTube. All right. Thanks.